Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. I hope you all watched that video and probably wondering how I made that car. So you might be also wondering out of all those thousands videos on YouTube, why should I be watching this video? The answer is when I was actually looking to find out information to build this car, I had to go browse so many YouTube videos and read a lot from the internet to find exact answer. It was really time consuming. So, I want to make sure that this video gives you a clear picture on how to actually build a remotely controlled Bluetooth car from scratch. Without no more talking, I'm super excited. I hope you guys are too. So, let's jump into the components needed for this project. So for this project, I used a steel plate to mount all the components needed. You don't have to necessarily use a steel plate as long as something sturdy is fine. And obviously I used two DC motor, two wheels and one caster wheel. So that basic components out of the way. Now we're going to be moving on to the main component. The first component is obviously the Arduino. So this is the brain of this car. I'll be showing you all the connections to this once I dive deeply into the other components and their connections. Next up is the motor driver L298N H bridge. So this is what actually drives the motor. This will be getting the signals from the Arduino and this will be actually rotating the motor. Don't worry, we'll be diving deeply into the connections just in a bit. Next up is the Bluetooth module HC05. So this is pretty much what connects the Android device to the Arduino. So that's this. The next up is the ultrasonic sensor. So this is HCSR04. This is a sensor we're going to be using for the obstacle avoidance. I'm using two different servo motors for this uh, gripper and the arm. For the arm, I'm using the MG996R. This is a pretty high torque servo motor. And the other one is a smaller one I'm using for the gripper, which is the SG90. This is small and low torque. This is the voltage converter where I can control how much voltage I want to give for each components. That's a really great part of this voltage converter. And a power source and uh, two LEDs for my purpose. And this is my gripper. Don't worry, I'll be leaving all the links, literally from the code to all the components I used, I'll be leaving in the description so you don't have to worry about anything. All right. So for those of you who already know the basic of these components, I have included the picture of the electric circuit in the description below. So just go there, start connecting and come back for the programming. All right. So from here on, let's take a close up look at these two components. If you flip it, let's look at here. This has a 12 volt ground and a 5 volt. Out 3, out 4, out 1 and out 2. So if you flip it just like that, this 12 volt is pretty much where the power is coming from. So he's going to get the power from the 12 volt battery. The only disadvantage of the edge bridge is it drops a voltage of 2. So if we are giving out 12 to here, it doesn't actually give out 12 to the motor. It only gives out 10. Since I told you already, this is 12 volt where the edge bridge is getting the power from. This is ground, obviously connected to the ground. You already see that this is a 5 volt. You might be asking, what is this 5 volt for? This is what is actually powering our brain. 5 volt wire from here will be connected to the VIN. This is pretty much powered and giving out power to the Arduino. Let's look at these two ports. This is out 1 and out 2. This is out 3 and out 4. Which means, here is where one side of the motor is connected to. So you'll be just putting the wires here. Here is where the other side of the motor is connected to. So two wires from the one motor will be going here. Two wires from the other motor will be going here. Let's say if we are using four motors, you can connect four wires from two motors here and four wires from the other two motors here. It will work perfectly fine. So now, if I want to control, like let's say if you want to turn on the motor or turn off the motor, how I do it is these two are corresponded to these two in one and in two. Whereas these two is connected to these two. So a wire from here will be going to the brain. So here, let's say if I'm connecting one wire to 13, 
then in my program i'll also make sure that somewhere in the program should have a 30. not necessarily exactly how i have it you can have anything but i'm just saying this is how they are getting the signals from the brain now this is powered and everything just one more thing before we go there you see a clip kind of thing you can take this off and put it back in this is called jumpers these are used if you were to control the speed of the motor if you're not controlling necessarily the speed in my case i didn't you don't have to take this off you can just put it in and it's just securely is there so let's jump into the another component that we're going to be using which is the bluetooth module so this is called hc05 this is pretty much how my phone and the arduino are connected and how they talk so if you flip it you see there are four pins so disregard this pin and disregard this pin there's only four pins that you need rxd and txd we'll get back to that later so vcc is pretty much where this guy is getting the power from ground is obviously the ground so txd and rxd is tx is a transmitter rx is the receiver so he's going to be receiving the signal he's going to be transmitting the signal but the connections for rx and tx are pretty opposite what i mean by opposite is a wire from rx will be connected to the tx of this arduino and a wire from tx will be connected to the rx so once you're done that you're just going to power your bluetooth module and you're going to ground it and you're good and let's move on to the next component so this is the ultrasonic sensor hcsr04 you can see there are four pins out here which is vcc trick echo and gnd the vcc is obviously where the sensor is getting the power from and ground the trick and echo you could connect to any pins that are available on the arduino so for example you can connect it to literally any points here as long as they are available because we are going to enable them in the program let's now move on to the next component so next up is the servos i'm using two servos to control the robo arm and the gripper for the arm i'm using the mg 996r servo this is 4.8 to 7.2 voltage maximum of 7.2 voltage whereas this one is the sg90 really small one and this can only hold up to maximum of 6 voltage so when you are giving out power make sure you are giving maximum of 6 because this could run in 6 and this could only run maximum of 6 so don't burn it because i did burn it if you see there are three wires the brown wire is going to the ground this is connected to 12 volt this yellow wire is where it's connected to the arduino board so any pin that available you can connect it and we'll program it after that all right the setting up of server motor is not as easy as setting up the dc motor because server motor has a home position that they will directly go there right when you power them up so that's something you have to keep in mind because when you're actually connecting to a gripper you have to make sure that you also take care of the home position because from there we have to measure the angle to actually set it up open and close I'll show you how to set up the angle in the program, but just to make sure that you're putting on your gripper right on the place, you have to make sure that you are taking care of the home position. So let's look at how does the home position work. Now everything is powered up. I'm going to turn on the servo motor. You see that right away I turn it on. It goes to that one specific position, no matter where. So I'm going to turn it off. Make sure when a servo motor is powered, Never try to turn or never try to rotate the servo motor because it will break. If you want to turn or rotate the direction, always turn it off and then rotate it. You can see if I'm rotating here, I turn it on, it will come back to the exact same position. That means that is the home position. So now I'm just going to take this off. I'm going to say, let's say I want the gripper. For example, if this is my gripper. I want the gripper to be at this direction. So now if I turn it off, turn it on, it's going to stay the same because that is the home position. So I'm going to turn it on somewhere. I'm just going to flip it somewhere, turn it on. We'll come back here. That's exactly what is happening to this gripper. Let's say I'm going to turn it off. Let's say I want to move it up. And then if I turn it on, you see that it goes right away to that position because that is the home position for this servo. So just keep that in mind and then I'm going to be showing you the programming just in a bit. 
So now we have connected all these wires and have some basic idea about these components. Let's jump into the fun part, the programming. Click on this video on your right to start programming your Arduino and to finish off your car. Catch you soon on the next one.